2018 Prius broke down on the road. Let's see what's wrong with it. We'll do a diagnosis on a breakdown, tow in. Okay, so as I mentioned, this car broke down and we're gonna start by checking for codes. Now it did just start up. So my guess is the inverter pump failed, which would cause the inverter to overheat. Car would shut down, but then it would turn back on. But who knows, it's just a guess. So we'll start with the health check, which is gonna check all modules. So at that, it's gonna take, you know, a good minute or so to check all modules. Okay, so the results are in. Let's see what we got. Transmission control, engine. Wow, what is this? Not what I expected. I thought we'd have some hybrid system errors. Fuel run out. Ha! Oh my God. This is quite odd. Um, <clears throat> there's no hybrid system errors, but as I peer down into the inverter reservoir, it is not moving. So that inverter pump is dead. I'm feeling it. Nope. No cavitation. I mean, the, the inverter pump's not vibrating. It's down in here. So it does have a dead inverter pump. Odd. I don't know how that code happened to disappear. All right, so I'm gonna see if there's power to the inverter pump and I can see its plug right down there. I'm gonna try out my new toy, which is these super long pliers. Cause it's hard to get in there and unplug stuff frequently. Okay, I don't know if you can see. I can't see. Okay. Got the plug loose. And there it is. Let's see if there's power there. There is power here. What should happen when I plug in that inverter pump down there is it should start running. And nothing. Okay, it's a bad inverter pump. Want to reiterate how simple this circuit is. The inverter pump runs all the time. When the car is on, the inverter pump is running and it's just a regular 12 volt power to the inverter pump. So there's no digital communication. There's no computers in here. This is a really simple thing to troubleshoot and repair. This is the reservoir. It circulates through the bottom third of the radiator and all the electrics. So basically when I'm done with reinstalling this inverter pump, all I'm gonna do is pour some coolant back in here and turn the car on and it will burp its own bubbles out. I don't have to bleed it. I don't need any special equipment. So let's, let's see that process. This is the replacement inverter pump. Now the factory procedure is interesting. They actually prescribe that you take the headlight off and I believe the bumper cover. It's kind of like an eight hour long process. So the trick here is that part where we lifted the inverter and we propped it up so we can just get right in there. All right, nice and loose. So we can prop this up with something. All right, I got the box from the inverter pump folded up, holding it up a little, and I'm gonna get this bracket out of the way. So, it's, those are usually pretty tight. Personally, the way I do it is I undo these three bolts. Even though it comes with a bracket, I don't use this new bracket. All right. <clears throat> See if I can use this magnet socket to lift those out of there and not lose them. Get a light so you can see. Okay. 
Got one. There we go. Okay, second clamp. Good. All right, I got both my clamps off. Let's try this one too. See that hose coming off? And as soon as it comes off, coolant's gonna spill. And I've got a bucket under here. Catch all the coolant. Ah, there we go. Get this wiggled out of here. I've got the inverter loose. I can kind of move it a little bit. And that makes it a lot easier to get this second hose detached. There we go. There's our dead inverter pump. Okay, so the reservoir is empty. All that coolant that was in this reservoir drained out when I disconnected the inverter pump. This system really doesn't hold much coolant. This is all that we drained when we removed the inverter pump. I'm gonna reinstall this coolant because I, it's, it's relatively new. The only test you need to do with an inverter pump uh, replacement is that you just see that the coolant is circulating and then you know it's working. So we're done here, I'll put this back together, I'll test drive, clear any codes, and it's fixed.